Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you my method of restoring old photos uh, with people and portraits and uh, give you my techniques and my rhythm. If uh, you get into restoring your own photos, you'll develop your own methods, your own tricks, but this will just get you started. If you uh, would like to share along some of your tricks and, and uh, some of the things that you do to restore, please pat, put them down in the comment section and share them with everyone. It just makes things easier and it helps people out. So let's get ready and let's start working. As you can see, I have got a photo loaded up in the photo bin. This is uh, a photo of some family friends taken probably in the 70s, so it's pre-digital. Most, almost all of the photos that uh, need to be rest restored are pre-digital. And um, this one is actually pretty simple. It doesn't look like it's going to need a lot. Now, the routine that I'm going to show you is my routine. Everyone who starts doing this, who uh, is serious about doing photo restoration, is going to develop their own routine and what works best for them and how different, different uh, tools to do different things. Again, this is just my routine and the way that I do things. Having restored several hundred, maybe close to a thousand photos that uh, were family photos. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do with this photo is I'm going to crop it. And I'm going to come down here to the crop button, hit the crop, and I'm going to hit no restriction. A lot of these photos have, some of them have been trimmed, some of them are just not standard sizes, so no restriction works for me. And then I am going to bring it up to the corner, bring the tool up to the corner of the photo, and then I am going to drag, and, drag it to where it's as close to the edge as possible, and we if we go over, we can always fix it. Ah, she's a little wavy here today. <laughs> Must be the heat. So I'm going to get as close as I can to the edge. Some people might go inside the edge. It can always be fixed. So I'm going to click on check because I am now about where I want it. It doesn't really need straightening. The uh, roof of the uh, building and back of, uh, of, of the family is pretty straight, so that looks pretty good for me. Next thing I'm, I'm going to click, okay, it's, it's clicked okay. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my zoom tool. I have zoomed the picture out. I usually go out to 400. It depends on the photo. Sometimes I'm uh, a little bit more, sometimes I'm a little bit less. But 400 works for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in sections in a grid like pattern. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to hit my healing brush and I'm going to size it down to where it's a size 8 is good 6, 7, 8 is usually pretty good to, to start when you've got it zoomed out everybody's different they're all going to be comfortable with a different size healing brush I have my healing brush on 6 pixels what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check the edges to make sure that they are clean and uh, if I see any white that looks like it's part of the 
back the, the uh, backing of the photo that's not part of the photo I will go through and I will run the healing brush over the edge in this case everything this corner looks good so I'm just gonna back up and then what I do is a simple grid pattern and um, and then I'll bring it across and anytime I see something that looks like it's a mismark or a dust speck I will click on it with my uh, my healing brush ah. sometimes it will smudge so you will go backwards sometimes I will use a clone tool if if I find that doesn't work I'll use a clone tool And in, in this case, I think that's what I'm going to do, is I think I'm going to use a clone tool, because this spot is, um, is not behaving well. So what I've done is I have clicked on my clone stamp. I have gone down here, and I have gone to the size, and I have that on 7 which is a pretty good size. You can always change it if it doesn't work. So I'm going to place my cursor over the spot that I want to clone. I'm going to hold down the Alt key so I can set the uh, design I want. And then I'm going to click and just get rid of that one little white spot on the roof. Then I'm going to go back up to my healing brush, which is still on six. And what you, you can decide how much you want to get rid of and um, what you want to fix. And just click out and clean up the spots that... Um, look like dust specks and if it if it doesn't look the way you want it to look you go through and you click the back button and it depends on how much you want to do and how how detailed you want to go uh, some people don't mind a little bit of dust showing through. You can decide how much you want to fix and how much you, you, you're willing to let go of. So what I'll do is I'll slide over into the next section and click and click. It's funny because I've actually kind of gotten into the habit of doing a little zap sound every time I, uh, I hit, hit something. And you'll just go play, you know, just take each little section as you go. Trees are kind of funny because there's opening as in trees and you, you don't want to get rid, you don't want to lose the feeling that they're leaves. But if it's obviously a, a uh, dust spot or something, you know, you might want to get rid of it. A little, a little creative licensing is allowed in uh, cases that are just like family photos. I wouldn't do this with a photo that was going to be sub, submitted for some kind of uh, journalistic journalistic reason. With that, you have to be much more careful what you do and do not do to the photograph. But for family photos that you just want to clean up, you can kind of uh, work at your own what you think uh, looks good. And uh, like I said, with trees, you want to see the background come through. So it's 
it's kind of up to you what you want to get rid of. Then we drop it down a little bit and we do the next section. Oh, and if it doesn't, if it blurs, sometimes it'll, sometimes they'll blur. And uh, what you'll do is you'll use a clone tool for those cases. And then again, you'll just, once you finish that section, you'll come down and uh, you'll start doing it again. And um, sections with black or dark backgrounds are much easier to figure out what's, what's good to uh, get rid of and what you want to keep. And just have a little fun and realize, you know, this is just a family photo. You're trying to make Uncle George look better. Now, whether you get rid of Aunt Sally's mole, that's up to you. But um, I like to leave those little pieces, you know, if that's, if Aunt Sally had a mole in real life, you kind of want to keep that little mole. And as we go forward, we are just cleaning up the little, little dots and dust specks and scratches that are pretty, pretty obvious. And again, it's, it's a family photo. You're allowed a little creative license. And we'll go through and just here and there. Drop it down and do your next section. It's funny, one of the kids that uh, I worked with on the railroad he was big into computers, and uh, one day I was explaining to him how I did, how my system was, and I, I told him, I said, it's kind of like a, like a video game where you're zapping aliens, and he laughed. He thought that was pretty funny, but that's kind of what you're doing, is you're, you're zapping little alien dust specks. Just kind of make make Doug's shirt look like it's not quite so ratty and moth-eaten. Sometimes you'll have to go over a spot once or twice. Drop it down again, and then just clear out the next section. And again, how much you do is entirely up to you. Everybody's going to have a different level of what they're comfortable with doing. Sometimes you'll have to hit a spot once or twice. You want to leave the wrinkles in in the shirts. Slide it, bring it down. And uh, just check and see that there's nothing that looks out of place on Kylene. use the clone tool here and then go back up and change it to the healing brush there's a couple little scratch marks there sometimes it's better if you start in one spot and drag it. It will sometimes it will sometimes give you the effect of what you're looking for. Sometimes just a spot spot click is what works.
bring it over. There's some more scratch marks. And again, it's easier to see the miss marks when you have a dark background. And then bring it down. And click out the little, the little miss marks. Now this white area right here that you see, I'm assuming that's a flower. It's up to you whether you want to keep it or get rid of it. You can do that. You can certainly get rid of it if you want to. I have just done so. But I think it's a flower, so I am going to actually leave it because it doesn't look like a tear. And I happen to know that this family had gardens. And uh, we're going to bring it over here. And finish out a few more spots. Over to Kylene's jeans. That one's a little stubborn. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure those are flowers because that up here, this up by her hip also looks like a flower. But there's a couple little miss marks right there. Again, it's an old photo. It's not going into the newspaper. I'm going to check the edge because I think it looks like it was almost, almost cut off white. I try very hard not to have a white background. I can always do that later in Photoshop. I can add a white background if I choose to, or a white border. And down here you can see where the cut wasn't quite where the photo was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my healing brush and just slide it along the edge. And the white is gone. So that's the first pass through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my, um, my zoom brush and I am going to drop it down to 300% and I am going to go over it again, this time from the bottom to the top, but it's all up to what you want to do. I'm going to hit my healing brush and the reason that I go down in size it's always easier to get the big the the details on the the larger size first and then go back in and as you're zooming out you might see things that didn't show up in the larger size and then I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do each little section and I'm gonna see how it looks and then go up again and slide it over and, and check it out as I go. And sometimes there are little spots that you just want to clean up and that's the spot. I'm going to do that with a spot on Kylene's shirt. Um, I just, it didn't look right to me. And then I'm also going to try this to see how that looks. But I don't really think we needed to do that. So I'm going to leave that. And then we're going to go up and we're going to do our next section. And then slide over. I don't 
don't see anything that looks like it needs to be fixed. Up again. Slide over. Up again. Slide over. And then up the last of the way. There's one little spot that sometimes they will escape you. Sometimes the little spots will escape you. This line you can obviously see leads to a, a wire and you want to leave that. I think that is some kind of power pole or something. You could take it out. It's it's up to you, but I'm I'm gonna ch I choose to leave it in because it does look like it belongs there. And I'm gonna slide over. And again, I'm gonna go up to my zoom tool and click the minus button and go down to 200%. And as you can see, you just keep going pulling back. You're pulling back to see how the fight, how the photo looks as it gets smaller and smaller. And then in this case, we're just sliding down and checking to see if there's anything that looks out of place. I'm actually pretty happy with this. I'm going to hit the, the, the shrink button one more time. And now we're down to pretty much um, where I want, where it would be normally, where it's a normal photograph. Now next, what I'm going to do is, if at this point, what I would do is uh, check the exposure. Is there something that uh, you want to lighten up. It's actually pretty well exposed. The, the skin colors look good. So this is where you can play around with color correction. Um, you can hit the smart fix. If you don't like that, which I don't <laughs> in this particular photo, so we won't use that. Um, you can uh, Hit the lighting if you want to change the lighting. Again, it's not something that I'm I'm particularly fond of that look. So we're going to cancel because these are the colors look pretty pretty good as they are. Uh, one of the things that I always like to check is the haze removal. Re, haze removal. I really like that tool. Um, you can adjust by sliders, adjust your height, you know, how much you want to take out. You can check um, the before and the after, and it almost does nothing. So I'm going to cancel. I don't need to use that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to adjust the, uh, I want to sharpen it because you want to sharpen everything. A little bit especially with these old photos these old photos that tend to be a little fuzzy before digital um, most photos really were usually a little fuzzy because the camera equipment wasn't wasn't where it's at now and the way I do it is I go to the, the quick a quick fix and then I will do an automatic, and it automatically does it. And then I'm going to go back to expert and see how it looks on their faces. And I'm not really sure I like that. No, I don't like that. I didn't. I didn't like that. So you're going to check, and uh, it almost it, it distorts the uh, the edges. So no, I'm not. I'm not going to sharpen on these. And on this, there is one more step that um, I want to try and see. And that is noise reduction. And in a lot of these old cheap cameras, you used to get a lot of noise. So I'm going to go up to filter. 
and I'm going to hit on the noise and I'm going to go over on the drop down menu and go to reduce noise and it's going to smooth things out and you can set the uh, how much you want it smoothed and uh, the pressure details the reduced color noise You can do that and then you can click OK and see what it does and then again go back to your back button and see what it does in this case it almost doesn't really make make a difference the reduced noise will get rid of the grain a lot of the grain depending on on the, the old photos Old photos tend to be somewhat grainy. In this photo, actually looks. I'm actually pretty happy with this photo. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I am going to save it, and I'm going to go down to save. It's in the file, and I'm going to click on yes confirm save as. I'm going to click on yes and I'm going to click on OK and then I'm going to click out. So now what I've got I've done is I have worked from a copy which is something that I stress always 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 work from a copy and then I'm going to click on the the one that I just worked on I'm going to open that in photos and that's the photo that I just finished working on and that's the photo that I was working from that is the copy and because this is this photo is is really not that badly scratched or dust dust covered it's really not that much of a big change some photos you will you will see will change a lot what it does is it just takes out all this little uh, specks and it just kind of cleans it up as opposed to what it what it used to be all these little specks are now gone As you can see in this photo, all the little specks are gone. So we're going to go back out. I'm going to click out. And since I have an additional copy, I am going to delete the, uh, the one that I, I didn't use, the one that I didn't work on. And now I have a photo that has been cleaned up and uh, again this is this is an easy one not all photos are going to be this easy and uh, it's it's actually a nice shot of Doug Witherby his son Doug Jr. and Kyleen and uh, I'm actually going to give this to um, the Port Henry Mariah Port Henry Historical Society because uh, they were a rather rather well-known family in the area and uh, I have a thing for photos I hate throwing out photos so that's that looks good for this photo and I would say this photo is is done and we'll be on to the next one now the photo I have here is another easy easy cleanup this is a picture of my cousin uh, Susan and her soon-to-be husband Doug little side fact about Doug is Doug went on to play professional football for the Tennessee Titans but this is uh, I believe this is her pre-engagement photo uh, photos were taken by her her mother when I put these in the scanner, when I scanned all these photos into 
into my computer. I just put them onto the scanner. I wasn't paying much attention as to how crooked or how even they were or how, how centered they were. So the photo looks uh, correct up and down vertically. Uh, they're both standing fairly straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop first. I'm going to hit my crop button, go up to the top, and drag it down to the other corner about where it's going to look right. I am going to just check it a little bit to see. I'm actually okay with the way they are vertically. And uh, so I think I'm going to leave it that way. It's not... It's not a professional shot. It's just a shot of the, the young couple. So I have my canvas that I'm going to work on. So now I'm going to uh, hit my zoom button and uh, slide it out to 400%. That's my favorite um, percentage. Other people may have a different percentage, larger or smaller. And sometimes the photo will tell you um, how big you want, how big you want it to go. And then we're going to go up here, and we're going to hit the, uh, the the healing brush. And then you can come down here to the bottom down here and set your size. And then you're just going to start zapping like they're aliens. <laughs> Zap all the little dust spots like they're aliens and clean up whatever doesn't look right. And foliage is uh, usually pretty fun because foliage, you can... Uh, And the thing about foliage is that it has little nooks and crannies that are um, different colors. And uh, sometimes the sky is peeking through. So you have to kind of judge which, uh, which dust spots and, um, and imperfections you want to get rid of. As long as it's not something that you're going to submit um, to, like the news newspapers, for or you know something professional, it's pretty much um, your call. I wouldn't do this with a photo that um, is going to go to like a newspaper. Because there you could be accused of doctoring, doctoring something or erasing something. So you want to be a little bit more careful about the editing that you do on a photo that is a little bit more uh, editorial. And we're just going through, clicking out the dust spots that don't look right. And foliage has shadows, and the sun will hit certain leaves and not hit others. So again, it's it's up to you. What do you want? What do you feel comfortable with? What is your you know level of uh, editing that you want to do? And if something if something doesn't if you try something and it doesn't work, you can always go down to your little back button and remove and reverse it. And I'm just going through, clicking out all of the, the little dust specks that I, uh, I, I think just can go. And trying to, I'm trying to leave the reflections and the shady leaves. And 
down by there and there. And this is a pretty easy photo to do. It's it's not going to take a whole lot. I don't like the way that that one came out. And if you if you need to, you can use your clone button. The thing on. And just keep keep blasting those alien dirt specks until you're you're happy with your result and then slide it over and do the next section hair can be funny too here's another thing that sometimes you'll get a highlight or you'll get a shiny spot and you'll get shadows the big thing about hair is you want to make sure that it doesn't, the editing you do doesn't interrupt the, the flow of the hair. And you'll get a feel for it once you've been doing it a few times. And we are just, just zapping away at those little dust aliens. I've said before, it's a bit like shooting aliens in a video game. And we're going to do that one and that one. And when you come to the edge, always check your corners because when you do your cropping, sometimes uh, it, the corners and the edges of your your picture will will be a little over or under and you'll get um, something in the background that you don't want in the background when it looks good to your uh, when it looks to your liking slide it down And keep zapping away. And if you have to, again, if you think you need to, don't be afraid to use your clone button. We're gonna give him we're gonna check his shadows a little bit. looking pretty good so we're gonna slide it on over and then we've got some scratches here that looks to me right there like a highlight you it's up to you you can take it out it actually looks better with it out couple little light spots little dust spots again I am very anal when it comes to to editing these photos I've probably done a thousand or more family photos that um, needed to be needed to be um, restored some of them are quite old there's a couple that I will go over later on that uh, are, are quite challenging. And you'll have to make some, some decisions if you have a photo like that. You'll have to make some decisions how much you want to do because old photos are, are, I mean, really old photos. I have photos that go back to 1900. And um, really old photos can be a real challenge. And again, sometimes you just slide your, your uh, healing brush. You can change the size. For the dust specks, I like to go with a smaller size. I, 
anywhere between five and eight usually works for me. Um, some people are more comfortable with uh, larger, larger sizes. Some people are much more comfortable with um, smaller sizes. And you can also um, enlarge the photo more if you if you choose to do that. And we are looking pretty good, I think. So we're gonna drop it a little and keep going. This one. A lot of these uh, old photos a lot of these old photos were taken with cameras that just they don't have the detail that uh, the new digital ones do and uh, they can be grainy they can be slightly out of focus and some photos there's only so much you can do do to uh, make them better and uh, you have to be satisfied with what you can do again always work from a copy especially if you're going to do this for other people you absolutely want to work from a copy um, that way you take you either have your uh, client send you a digital copy of what they have, or you very, very carefully scan their copy into your scanner, and you give them back the original as it is, rips, tears, scratches. You give them that back as soon as possible, because sometimes those photos are very precious. And... Uh, so you don't want to be responsible for destroying something that uh, may be irreplaceable. Now with Susan, you can see the sun is shining on her in ways that it's probably not flattering. You can go in and remove them, and I have done that. Or you can make it look worse. So, I choose not to make it look worse. <laughs> and it's, it's really not that bad. You can try a smaller, I don't, you can try a smaller pixel, a smaller size healing brush. I just don't want her to end up with a, with a black eye. And what you do, again, is up to you. You don't want to do so much that she looks like she has a black eye. But sometimes you can make it look better. I'm going to leave the uh, highlight spot on her, on her, at the corner of her mouth. Just kind of uh, touch up some of her hair a little bit. Susan always had good hair. She always had good hair. Unfortunately, Susan passed away some years ago. She had cancer. And she passed away. You can just just kind of play with them. If you don't like what they do, uh, you can always reverse it. If it smudges, sometimes sometimes the healing brush will will smudge uh, the details a little bit too much. Again, you'll hit hit reverse. Hit the back button, and uh, you can undo it. And we're just going through, getting the 
the wrinkles in his in, in Doug's shirt and I think what I'm going to do with that is hit the clone button because and then just kind of clone it out and then go back up and hit the healing brush and continue on that one. That one smudged a little too much. And then what we have here, it works best when you do it in a grid pattern because then you can see where you, where you've been and what you still need to do. I have on occasion, um, I have left a photo in mid, in midstream and it's really hard to pick it up when you come back. Although sometimes you come back and you, you know, if you let a photo rest, you do a little work on it and you rest, you can sometimes go through and I would always recommend starting like you hadn't started and then just go over the photo. Start with the main main uh, corner and and work in grid pattern even over the areas that you've already been on and uh, that will uh, help you find your place and sometimes you can see things with fresh eyes that you you uh, didn't see with uh, when you were working on the photo and then you just slide it over and sometimes just dragging it, sometimes just dragging your cursor will. In some cases, I have found that the smudge brush will sometimes work as well. That, that tool tends to work in areas that are a little fuzzy, that are a little out of focus. kind of just kind of touch up the areas that um, that look like they they could be cleaned up and as I said in another when doing another photo if cousin Sue has a prominent mole somewhere you kind of want to leave leave uh, physical features and uh, because that's you know if you're doing a if you're doing a, a picture of a person and they have prominent features like a mole that's on their cheek or uh, freckles you kind of want to leave the freckles because if you take them out they are no longer the same person just gonna smooth this out a little bit they they uh, they aren't who they really are and I I just I personally um, I like to uh, leave a photo so that it when you look at the photo that is the person that you um, that is the person that you remember them to be now if you're working on a photo of somebody who's all of a sudden broken out in a serious case of acne, you uh, might want to get rid of the acne. Again, it's up to you. If you're doing it for someone else, if you're doing the editing for someone else, ask the person who you are, uh, if you can, who you're doing the photo for, do you want me to take out the acne? And they will tell you yes or no. Um, they might tell you, no, that's, that's the stage of life they were in. You know, they're going through their terrible teens. They're, um, so no, I think in a lot of cases, if it's something like acne or a rash, they will probably be happy if you take it out. And we're going to slide over here 
and continue to take out the little dust aliens. Now, on this, the bottom of this photo, once I get these out, I will show you what we, we will do. We will take out this this white streak that uh, was left in when we cropped the photo. And it's a pretty good size. So let's try this with this size and then just slide it over. You might have to go over it a couple of times. When you're doing a large portion, it will sometimes smudge. You might have to go over it a couple of times and get rid of the white streak. And then um, what I'm going to do now, because it looks pretty good, I am going to hit the small, the small zone, the, the small zoom button. Sorry, and we're going to go over it again. My, the way I do it is I do it from the top down and then the bottom up. But it's all personal choice, what works better. And just kind of give it a good once over. And if I see something that I might have left behind that looks out of place, I'll go ahead and uh, clean it up. And then we'll go up, work our way up, slide over. I am going to take this out because it looks like Doug has a nippy and I don't think he needs needs to show those. And then we're going to slide up and then slide over and then slide up and slide over. Looks pretty good. So we're going to, again, take it down, and then we're going to do it again, just kind of go over it. And the reason that I zoom out is because sometimes you'll catch things as you get smaller that um, you didn't like before. And then we'll slide down and just kind of... Just kind of touch up the areas that um, that look like they they could be cleaned up. These are all auto. See, these will always um, anything that says auto will be automatically fixed by the computer program. You can adjust down here. You can adjust different colors. You can adjust your saturation. Um, you can change the saturation on your photo. We're going to hit cancel because that's not going to do a thing for this photo. Uh, you can hit your lighting. This one is particularly particularly useful. Um, if you hit, you know, on zero where no no nothing is set, you can lighten up the shadows. In this case, I like the shadows dark. But I might want to darken the highlights a little bit. I don't like to darken them a lot, but I might just adjust it a little bit. And then I'll click it OK. I am going to check the uh, haze haze removal because it's, it's another one that I like a lot. And you can adjust how much you want. You can hit the before and the after. You can change the sensitivity and the haze reduction. It'll just take the uh, take the brightness, shininess off. And I actually do kind of like that a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. I have it where I want it. I am going to go up and um, I'm going to check the sharpness 
and see what happens if I do the automatic sharpen. And then I'm going to go back to expert. You can do it manually. I just don't, I don't like it. Some of these photos, the sharpen on some of these photos, these old photos, it just distorts them a little too much. One of the things that does work really well, though, on these old photos is the noise. So again, I'm going to go up to my noise. I'm going to go down to reduce noise. I'm going to move it so I can see Susan's face a little bit and play with it a little. How much, um, how much noise I want to, how much of the graininess I want to take out. And again, it, it all depends on what you're comfortable with. Sometimes it doesn't, it, there's, there's barely a, uh, a difference, and that's up to you. I actually think this, look, this is looking pretty good, so I am going to go down here. And I'm going to click Save As. And I'm going to click Save. Click, do you want to save it? Yes. Yes. And then we're going to click Out. And I'm going to go over here to the photo that I just finished working on. I'm going to click Photos. This is the photo that I just finished cleaning up. And as you see, when you go, when you zoom in, all the little dust spots are pretty much gone. And then if I click out to the, the copy that I have, again, always work from copies, you can see the old the old dust spots. And then click it in and see the difference. And I think we're pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that photo. So as you can see, photo restoration isn't as difficult as some people may think, it's just a matter of getting started and just learning some basic techniques using the clone brush and the healing brush and in some cases the smudge brush and the crop tool. So I'm glad that you all decided to join us today and if you'd like more videos like this just leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your tips and tricks. And uh, as always, I am very grateful that you're here and that you decided to spend time with me and maybe learn something. So if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with somebody that you know might get something out of it, and definitely say hello, definitely say hello. And um, until the next video, thank you.